Hi, it's Dr. Farik, and you've made it to week two. Uh, sorry, it's really sunny, so I've kind of got a halo, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go with it. Uh, so this is the week two walkthrough, and I'm gonna say a few extra things because I want to make sure you pick up on anything you might have missed the first week through. Um, and then after this, the walkthroughs will probably start getting a little bit shorter and just focused on the assignments. Uh, so I'm here. I use Firefox at home because Google Chrome does not work well with Blackboard on my home computer. It works fine on my work computer. They're both Macs. I don't know. Um, so it's literally the only thing I have it downloaded for. Uh, I have updated some of the menus a little bit from when I first started. So you may see extra things compared to some of the uh, original orientation videos. And I may keep tweaking it. I'm always going to be trying to make it easier to use. Um, so here I kind of made a quick access that has the to-do list, the slides that I use for my lecture videos, uh, and the, a link to a, the playlist. So if you would rather just watch things sort of run through in YouTube, you could come here. Uh, I'm, I think I'm just going to do one big playlist instead of breaking up the modules, but you'll know that it's moved on to a new module because you'll see the module overview. Uh, so I start with the weekly to-do list, see what's coming up this week. So here, do, do, do. Oh, I'm not signed in. I don't think that'll matter. Uh, as a reminder, if you want to use this as your own to-do list, you can go file. I'm not signed in, so it's not giving me the option to make a copy. But you can make a copy. Let me sign in so that you can see uh, how to make a copy. Uh, which one is this? Okay, good. That's my non-Caldwell one. That's good because I can show you how to save it uh, somewhere different. So if I'm going to go make a copy. Uh, it's going to default to my drive. So that's the drive that I'm using right now. That's going to say a copy of, I might say like Sarah's because that's how I self-talk. Um, and then you can kind of cross things off as you go. Uh, actually, another trick that I might do, I might use the suggesting mode because then when I delete things, it doesn't fully go away. It just kind of says, you said you wanted to delete this. So I could still find it pretty easily if I want. But so the weekly to-do list uh, will come down to module two. Uh, so again, these readings I've kind of roughly ordered. Uh, if you look at my slides, you can, often the slides I kind of go through in what I think is the most logical order, mixing the readings and the videos. But for the weekly to-do list, I try to keep all the readings, all the videos, and this week there's a podcast too. Um, so yeah, if you go and look, you could one way you could use this ahead of time is for seeing kind of the order that I suggest. Yeah, because I do some readings. No, maybe I did do them in the same order. I think sometimes I might mix up the order and sometimes I keep it like this. Um, or maybe it's in Blackboard that I sometimes change the order. But at any rate, uh, so this week there's some really short readings again. So like this one you'll see is super, like it's just, uh, it's kind of, when I talk about a professional blog, this is the sort of thing I mean. Um, so this, uh, the Joan John case was a groundbreaking case for gender norms, but there's a lot of evidence that's come out over time that the original reports were actually not so accurate. Uh, and that the guy was super unethical. Um, here is, uh, I think this is the only really full article that I have you read this time. Um, and it's really cool. It describes observational research. I'm not on campus, so it's asking me to log in. And I think that password might be old. We'll see. Nope, it's updated. Um, and then there's a couple of abstracts. So if you look in Blackboard, if we go into the weekly modules, I just have the abstracts pasted in there because it's, I think, really interesting concepts, but it's too much for this week. Um, yeah, so I just, but I think the abstracts are enough, at least for me, to get a lot out of. So it's, it's the same two people publishing in the same source, and they're just really kind of giving a feminist critique of the stereotypes, the gender roles and stereotypes in newer Disney movies. We often think that like, wow, Disney's come so far and like they're showing such strong female characters. And in many ways they are, but it's important to also recognize the thematic issues. 
Uh, so I think these two, one talks about Frozen, the other talks about Moana, and kind of points out like, well, yes, on, there are some great things, but if you look deeper, there's also some problematic things still. Um, then I have you uh, look at, is that, sorry, I'm just confused. Okay, so here I am mixing a little bit, uh, and I might change that, but I'm, I'm mixing the order a little. Um, so then from the, from the book, you'll read about the sexualization of girls, um, and then you'll notice they reference quite frequently the APA task force. Uh, so you'll read not the full report, but the executive summary of that. Um, so just a few pages from that, from an American Psychological Association. So the same people who write the APA style manual, don't hate them, they're, they're nice people. Um, uh, an article from the New York Times that looks at sort of how we view black children and especially black girls differently from white children and white girls. Uh, and there's this tendency to treat them as older. Even things like estimating children's age, we find that uh, white people tend to estimate black children of the same age to be older than white children. Uh, and then also, this is kind of getting more into adolescence and adulthood, but thinking, uh, we think particularly in um, adolescence about eating disorders. And uh, so there's a chapter from the lectures textbook that addresses that. Uh, videos. Um, there's a couple videos. So uh, one is still getting at that idea of particularly black girls being targeted for behavior, dress, things like that. Um, there's a video about specifically black hair. So we think about intersectionalism throughout this course. So thinking about hair standards and how that may be applied differently for different, uh, genders and different groups. Um, and the last one just kind of touches on how, why body image and self-esteem is important. All right, so those are the readings and, uh, sorry, the readings and videos. That's the word for that. Oh, and then there's a podcast, isn't there? Yes. Uh, so there's a podcast. It's Freakonomics. It's based on a, a book. Uh, it originally had Stephen Dubner and Stephen Levitt. Stephen Levitt's an economist. Stephen Dubner's a journalist. Uh, but over time, Stephen Levitt, Levitt dropped out of the podcast, uh, but Stephen Dubner continues it. So this is from fall of 2019, and it's looking at sort of princess culture and Hollywood. Uh, I find it really interesting. And if you go here, uh, so they have the, in oh, that's what this is. I don't know why I was, what I was looking for. So they have the entire transcript. If you're tight on time, you can read this faster than you can play it, but you can also play it here. You can also uh, download it to your phone. Probably I listened to it through Apple podcasts. Um, yeah. So they kind of link, um, and it says edited for readability. It's very small edits. It's not like they are picking out just a few pieces. It's sort of, I think, by that they mean they took out the ums and some of the word repetitions that happens when people are talking just off the cuff. Uh, so our, there's no big assignments due this week. It's all in the discussion boards and then a quiz. So let's look at the discussion boards. So discussion board. I haven't decided yet. Uh, it'll depend. It'll probably vary each semester. Whether I do, here this link says reading circle groups, and that's if I want you to kind of break into smaller groups and kind of talk amongst that group. I do that for writing in psych when there's a lot of peer review. For this class, I may kind of try different things because I want to allow everyone to engage with each other, but I also know that sometimes, you know, 18 to 20 people is a lot of people to be engaging with each week. So there may be some value to having a more focused group that you're interacting with regularly. Um, so I'm going to struggle with that and I may even kind of check in with the students who are signed up each semester and see what you want. So last week you did an introduction and since that video I added, oh, you can see, still my glasses, um, same sweater, same, I wear basically a uniform, uh, a self-created uniform. Uh, but so uh, I added an, a sample introduction. Um, Discussion board rules. So check, make sure you check back to this board because at the end of the module one, I'm going to go in and try to kind of suss out what seems to be 
the dominant rules that people want and just kind of guidelines that people want to set. Uh, and I'll, so I'll try to post a summary near the end of module one or the beginning of module two. Uh, module one, you also picked a character. Make sure you went back and uh, responded to yourself to say, okay, this is the one I'm definitely going to go with. Um, so week two, check in and photo of the week. So the first week you do an introduction. After that, each week we'll do this check-in. And this is meant to be um, a fairly short, easy assignment where you're just kind of really checking in. Um, but another piece that I'm adding on here, so part of it is just sort of informally, what are you thinking about? What's on your mind? How's life feeling in general? So it's a space where when you're feeling really pinched, you can see that everyone else is feeling pinched too. Um, it's also a place where you could ask a question about an assignment. Um, I try to look through these. Um, so I, you know, if you have a quick pressing question, you can always email me instead. That's the fastest, most direct way. But I also do try to look through these and sometimes I'll clarify something uh, if I see a question about an assignment. But sometimes your peers might know too. Um, I also each week want you to post a photo and I'm gonna, as a reminder, show you the best way to post those photos. So when you come in and you create a thread, you have this text box that pops up and there's uh, some formatting. So I can insert or edit an image uh, and I can do from my computer and I'm gonna do, so this is right on here uh, because it's what I just uploaded earlier. Uh, I like to do an image description. So I might say selfie and I'll just do the same for the title. And then I like to go into the appearance. Um, if, if constrained proportions is checked, then you know that it's gonna keep it about the same. And I usually do about 500. So that way it's not so huge. Uh, so when you do it like this, it's gonna show up right on in the post for everyone, uh, which is much easier. If I were to attach it like this, you can see everything's kind of different. And now it's going to be there as a link that people have to click. Not nearly as nice. You want to insert it as a photo. Um, so you'll post a photo of the week that relates to course content, ideally from this module, but it doesn't have to be. Um, so it could be from everyday life. So I might post a photo of me from uh, childhood. I might photo, post a photo of a kid I'm around. I might also post a photo of side-by-sides of two game boxes. I'm gonna pull these up for the lecture later. Oh, that one's upside down. Um, but I might do the game boxes side-by-side -side and talk about, um, and then I might talk in my post about how like one of them is marketed to girls. And on the one hand, that's great because it makes it clear that girls have space in gaming. But on the other hand, it's really tough because my worry is that it hurts boys because then boys won't feel like they can play with this really cool game. Uh, and that it also hurts girls because it kind of sends the signal that we will tell you which games are for you uh, and the other games are for the boys. So I have this mixed feeling about marketing. You know, I love that they're doing themes that may appeal more to girls, but I have very mixed feelings about the way they're marketing it. So that might be something that you would um, post as your photo of the week. And this is really meant to just kind of let you, it, it's meant to encourage you to think about this course, how it fits with your everyday life. Um, I might also, my husband, I think I mentioned already in here that my husband has said how like there's this whole tool subculture and the pictures and ads for it are really like so ridiculously masculine. Um, and so although our focus is typically on women in this course, you can certainly post things about other genders. Um, and uh, so each week you'll do just, as this check and post, you'll do just a sort of brief, how's the week going for you? Um, and it can be just a one sentence response. It doesn't need to be really deep. And then a photo, ideally, very ideally attached using this little, it's the third box in from the left. So there's a YouTube video, a paper clip, and then a little picture and you want to click the little picture um, and it helps if you go over to appearance and set it to be like 500 or a thousand or something because uh, most of our pictures are really high resolution now uh, so you'll 
do a check-in, post a photo, and then it's important that you add this one to two sentences, sort of explaining what the photo is and how it relates. And again, it's great if it relates to that module, but if you see something three weeks from now that you think it, other students would really be interested in seeing that relates to childhood and girlhood, I'm fine with that. Um, it's a goal, not a requirement. So that's your first, and that's gonna be every week, the check-in. Next up is a media report. So, this, so the check-in will have, oops, uh, that takes away the description. The check-in will have a photo from your life. Let me make these a little bigger. Um, the media report is a little different. Um, I want you to take something that you see out in the world. So this could be a photo of an advertisement. It could be a link to a YouTube video. It could be a news story or even a journal article. So it can be, um, it, it's pretty open, just something written, imaged, a, a meme, a GIF. I'm pretty open to what it is. Um, and so you'll link to it. Uh, you will talk about it. Uh, for accessibility, anytime you're including a link or, a uh, or anytime there's a photo, in include a sentence or so describing what it is. So actually, I should go back in and do that up here. Um, it's a white woman in her 30s wearing blue glasses standing in front of a brick wall. Uh, and you could kind of choose how many of the details are important to you. So um, for here, I might mention that there's, you know, light jewelry, that there's minimal makeup, that she has long hair, um, long dark hair, long brown hair, whatever. Um, so it's, it's kind of up to you how much to describe, but it's, describe at least the main idea in case you do have a classmate who has difficulty seeing photos. Um, so for this, you'll kind of give a brief one to two sentence. How would you describe this? How would you tell somebody what it is? Uh, and then you'll also, I want you to analyze it critically. Um, so I want you to use course concepts, including at least one citation. Uh, when I have you cite sources from the course, I do not want you to cite my videos, my lectures. Uh, it needs to be one of the many, many other sources. I want you to use APA style for this, uh, which is why I model so sources all the time. So here in the, uh, the to-do list, every Everything I use, I include how you would cite it in APA style, the author, the year. Uh, often the videos end up being TED or TEDx or something because for YouTube, it's who put the video up, the name of the account. Um, I also do it here in my lecture. And I think when I post them on Blackboard, I also do it. And then in, under the syllabus, there's a link to get to the references uh, for when you write a paper. Um, for this, just the citation is enough if it's a course one. If you decide to use a scholarly reference outside of the course, then I want to see a source and a citation, or I'm sorry, a, a citation and a reference. Um, yeah, and I'm in, I'm in the student preview, uh, but there's uh, a rubric for each of these. Uh, so as with most things, there's one post due to start and then two posts due a few days later. And uh, the idea is that you can expect to go in, you know, you know, if you go in once after the deadline for the first post, there should be plenty of peers to respond to. Um, and it varies. I've got some that start Tuesday, others that start Thursday. So I try to kind of break things up across the week. Um, the check-in and the photo of the week I also do earlier because I figure you don't need to have made it through all of the readings yet to be able to do those in a meaningful way. Whereas the next few, you really need to have done the readings and videos pretty thoroughly by that time. So you've got check-in, media report, which, and that's another one that'll happen just about every week where you, so stay on the lookout for photos. You know, you can take photos from life now and use that as photo of the week. You can also take photos of things or save links from things that you think would make good media reports. Partly this also covers because I see so many things that I'm like, oh, I should go add that in my course. My course is already full and I just can't keep adding things. Uh, so it's partly a way that we can, first of all, keep it fresh um, because you can see I've used a lot of really recent things for when this course was developed, which is for spring 2020. Um, and I can't, online courses are hard to redevelop over and over again. 
So this is a way that you can get updated sources. It's also a way that everybody can bring their own flavor. Up next is a topical post. These I typically keep open. For now, I think they're all pretty open, other than the first one, which is setting norms for the discussion. Uh, I may, over time, find that there are some topics that I really want students to focus on. So I may assign a topic or say, choose one of these two or three topics. But for now, it's really open to you because I want you to be able to get I want you to express what you're most interested in. I also want you to be able to hear from your peers on as many different topics as possible. Uh, and remember, these are the, the conversations that for the most part, I try to stay in the background of um, because I love this topic. I could talk about all of this for hours uh, each day, but I wanna make sure that you have a space to try out ideas and to challenge each other. Um, so for the topical post, you're gonna choose an important topic from this week's readings and videos and write at least 500 words. So it's longer than a typical post. Usually I'm expecting 150 to 250 words for a post. Um, the check-in might even be shorter than that. But for the topical post, uh, so I don't, I should probably add in word counts for the media reports as a guide, but I'm really thinking 150 to 250 words, which is about the length of an abstract. Um, but for the topical post, I want this to be a longer, more developed post. It's almost like this is the essay you're writing but I keep it separate from the quiz. Um, so the quiz is all just multiple choice questions. At least now things might, I might tweak it in the future, but right now it's all multiple choice questions. And then I have almost like an essay that you have plenty of time and resources to write, uh, but it's couched as a discussion post so that you can learn from each other. Um, make sure that you have a one sentence thesis that says the main point of your post. For one, doing this helps you write better posts because it helps you really clarify what is my point here. And then you can kind of think about everything else you say in terms of, is this something that supports my idea? So this is something I don't expect you to be able to, you know, throw this out in five or 10 minutes in a constant stream of thought. This is something I want to see some organization and some editing in. They're like mini papers each week. Um, and I want to see at least two sources from this week. So this really needs to stay. You can pull in additional material from previous weeks or from future weeks if you're reading ahead. Um, but I really want to see the main focus on this week. Um, and again, as long as it's stuff that's already in the class, you can just grab the APA style citations from the weekly to-do list or lots of other places. So if I want to talk about something from the sexualization of girls, I can just write my, you know, write whatever main idea I'm taking from that article and citing it Sir Brigan 2018. Um, after, so that's due by Thursday, and that's probably the biggest assignment you're doing on a weekly basis is this topical post. Uh, the other two are meant to be a little lighter, a little more sort of interest-driven. Um, and this one is still interest-driven. It's what speaks to you, what you really want to dig into and make some points about. It could be things that are new to you, things that you have seen in your life. I'm okay with you using life experiences as part of this, but the source material needs to be the main focus. Um, so after you do yours, you're going to make responses to other people. And I want each of your responses to also include at least one source. So I'm kind of light on the quizzes for this class. There, there are quizzes, but they're fairly short. Um, really, they're kind of taking you in depth on one or two ideas from the week or from, from kind of each major source. Um, this is where I really want you to show that you've read and understood the material. So instead of doing really high stakes testing, um, I want you to use the material in your writing. Um, and I've tried to make that as easy as possible. Like I said, I, I really was thoughtful about providing you all the citations so that you wouldn't have to figure out how to cite. Um, but I want to see these, these topical posts be very thoughtful. Um, and when I make up kind of the plan for how long it's going to take you to do each week, I really set aside a, a decent chunk of time for this particular post. The next thing you'll do uh, is you'll move forward on your character analysis paper. So here, so week one, you choose your character. Week two, I want you to start, uh, so part of the paper is to describe your character and their bio. Uh, and so I want you to start drafting that here. So I want it to be in your own words. The first week you could just link to somebody else's bio. Now I want to see you start writing it in your words so it can go right into your paper. 
Um, and so I want you to have a nice paragraph. And I also want you to include something that will can take people to get even more information. Uh, and then after that, I want you to start brainstorming what you're going to focus on for your paper. Kind of out of all the material that seems to be in the class, and it could be looking through the weekly to-do list to see what kind of topics are coming up and what the readings look like, and even clicking on a few just to get a sense. So thinking about what are some course concepts you might focus on. Uh, and then when you go back through and comment, uh, it's really easy to just say, yeah, that's such a cool idea, yay. Um, and I, I like that. I like that support, and I think that's important. That's a lot of what the check-in is doing. But for this, I really want you to be engaging and working with other people's ideas. Um, so for your responses to at least two peers, I want you to have at least one idea about how that person might apply course concepts to their characters. Um, and if it's something that you're familiar, if it's a character you're really familiar with, or if you went and looked at the bio, you can also even suggest like, oh, you know, it might be important to mention this feature of the person or this thing that happened. Um, that's not required. What is required, like I said, is that you uh, contribute at least one idea about how course concepts might apply for this character. Um, so hopefully you get good feedback and are actually able to do better on your paper because of this. And that's pretty much it. So then, so here we're in the discussion. I come back up so I see this blue bar to pull out the navigation. Uh, the next thing that we do is uh, there will there is a quiz. Uh, so again, these quizzes, they're a time limit of an hour. And uh, if I, right now I have them as I think three multiple choice questions, but these questions are often, you know, the questions themselves can be fairly complex. You need time to find the information in your source material to really read and kind of figure out the nuances of what I'm talking about. So I think one hour, I would plan for it to take close to an, up to close to an hour. Um, again, I might change the form, you know, I might change the quiz questions somewhat. I might make more questions, but make them a little easier. Um, right now, uh, often the questions are almost like four true false questions. So there's three, you know, there may be three questions on the quiz, but it's kind of like 12 true false. Uh, sometimes I have where you have to check all of the answers that fit. So you have to read each one very, very carefully. Um, they're not worth a ton of points. They're worth 30 points. And your discussions, quite honestly, are worth much more than that overall. Um, I think one of them, I think, um, I believe the topical posts are worth 25 points. Um, I'm surprised it doesn't say here. I'm going to go out of the student preview so I can just peek in and check. Uh, but really do, you know, often discussions are kind of a lighter part of a class. But for here, this is where I'm really testing a lot. You know, in some of them, it's where I'm really testing your knowledge. So make sure you're budgeting a good bit of time for this topic you'll post. The others are usually a little lighter. Um, and the ones where I do... And also, I often will use the discussions to kind of structure stepping stones up to the assignments that you'll do. So it's going to take some time, but then it's going to save you time later. So I'm just going to look real quick how, much, how many points they have assigned for this. I just realized, is it in my weekly to-do list? It is. Yeah, so your check-in is 10 points. Those are fairly light. Topical post is 25 points. Character analysis and media report are both 20 points. So I really am, I'm kind of, I try to structure the points to value what I expect more work out of. Um, and then the quiz itself is 30 points. And honestly, the topical post is probably going to be more work than the quiz. Um, and I may change those point values in the future. So always look to see what I have because I try to make it make the most sense based on what you're doing the most work on. I also like things where when you work harder, or, you know, even if you're not, you know, tests often test how good you are at taking tests. I like to test how hard you're working. All right. I have gone on for quite some time. Let me just look back over to make sure that I got everything on the to-do list. Yeah. And so here in the to-do list, I have when the posts are due. And then I also have little, and in Blackboard, I just get to set one due date. So I set the due date for when your first post is due, but... If you don't finish your post, technically, according to the syllabus, I don't give you points. I often in practice will give about half credit 
for you having at least that first post, which is, um, in some ways it's unfair because you're getting half credit, but that first post is a lot more work than the other posts, uh, and you're losing out on a lot of points. Um, and actually for the media post, I don't know if I would give, I, I don't know if I would give that much credit, but at any rate, I give partial credit often if you do at least one post, um, but sometimes I, I don't have to. That's really just kind of, if I'm going to do it for one person on a week, I'll do it for everybody that week. Um, and I may do it early in the semester and then at some point say like, no, I really want you to, you know, part of the assignment is following up and I'm not going to consider you to have done the assignment if you don't follow up. So it's important that you remember to follow up. That's why I have these, uh, the to-do list reminders in here and then the quiz. Um, as always, it's helpful to start, um, especially over the weekend, to start doing some of the readings and videos. That's a lot of what this course is made up of. It's a lot of independent learning and then going into the discussion and working with your peers. Uh, and I, I'm looking over the discussion and giving feedback, particularly um, the, uh, the, the character analysis ones. I'm going to go in and I'm going to let you know if you're on the right track for the paper. Um, and the topical posts and the others, I, I will look around. I'll try to save any comments I'm going to give for later on in the week. Um, but I'll, I'll be looking and, and seeing that too. All right. So that's week two. Again, this video was a little extra long because this week really sets the stage for what's going to keep happening week after week. So hopefully I'll get a little shorter going forward. Thanks. Bye.